the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This is the kind of time and energy that our destinies require. And when we spend that time giving our all to Jesus, I can assure you the Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life eternal. You are sowing to the Spirit now. For some of you, you are not the only ones who will reap it. Your children and your children's children will reap from this conference. In the name of Jesus. I like you to please join me honor every man and woman of God uh, fathers and let me also honor our father in the Lord the general of Asia may the Lord bless you and honor you sir in the name of Jesus Christ I I wanted to teach this this morning or afternoon session it was in my heart to teach us on the power of mentorship but um, while I, I was listening and picking parts of the teachings that I, I understand they were teachings along the lines of relationships and I decided to teach hallelujah I decided that um, since I was speaking those teachings let me teach us something about destiny relationships that will bless us hallelujah praise the name of the lord i guarantee you by the god of heaven that if you pay attention to what you're about to learn you will reap from this harvest for the rest of your life in the name of jesus father open my eyes open my ears and give me an encounter go ahead and pray open my eyes open my ears give me an encounter give me an encounter hallelujah father we pray that your word will come to us again with clarity and with precision we are ready to move from where we are even to the place of destiny we receive understanding in jesus name i pray please be seated god bless you show us the ancient path Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Listen to me, please. The difference between any great destiny, a destiny of beauty and color and grace, and a destiny that ends up in shame and frustration, largely is the kind and the quality of information that they receive 
it takes more than a sincere desire to rise and fulfill your destiny you must access light knowledge high level spiritual illumination it is line upon line it is precept upon precept the bible says here a little and there a little and then you are built and established in righteousness acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able please give us kjv is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified that the word of god is his primary tool for building and it is the primary tool that hands you over your inheritance in christ that means if you ignore the word of god and the wisdom that comes from the word of god there is no guarantee for a fulfilling and an excelling life hallelujah the power of destiny relationships may this teaching change your life in the name of jesus christ the power of destiny relationships three scriptures and then i'll begin to teach proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20 i'm going to be requiring us to read together so please write and then be attentive proverbs 13 and verse 20 are you ready to read one to read he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed one more time he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed matthew chapter 4 from verse 17 to 22 matthew chapter 4 that's our second scripture the bible says from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand verse 18 and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers read verse the next verse now that will be 19 one to read and he said unto them but it can be anything follow me and i will make you a champion follow me and i will make you an exceptional student follow me and i will make you an exceptional parent follow me and i will make you an exceptional leader so our making in life largely depends on our followership and our associations acts chapter 4 we'll begin our reading from verse 7 and we'll end with 13 acts chapter 4 the bible says this was after the healing of the man at get beautiful the apostles were summoned and peter was being probed as to how he got the power to heal that man who had sat at get beautiful for a long time verse 7 now and when they had set them in the midst they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this and peter filled with the holy ghost said unto them ye rulers of the people and elders of israel if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important man by what means he was made whole 10 be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom he crucified who god raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand before you whole verse 11 this is the stone which was set at naught by you builders which is become the head of the corner 12 neither is there salvation in any other the bible says for there is none other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved verse 13 please 
I like you to read the whole of verse 13 as you see it. Ready? One, two, read. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took note, knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. That we once knew these men to be ignorant men, to be unlearned. What changed about their destiny? That today they had become champions working miracles like this. And they took note of the fact that the secret to their greatness was their association. They changed association. They had been with Jesus. Is someone learning already? In fact, let me give you one more scriptural reference and then we'll teach. Genesis chapter 12. We'll read the first four verses, then we'll go to chapter 13. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Let's start from there. Then we'll connect it with chapter 13. Again, I'll read and then I'll ask you somewhere along the line to join me. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, thy kindred, thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. It says, And I will make of thee a great nation. It says, I will bless them that bless you. And he says, I will make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless you. And curse him that cursed thee. And then he says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. It says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Now pay attention. Who did God speak to? Who did God speak to? God made a promise to Abraham that if you obey me, this will happen. But the Bible records something very interesting. Please keep that scripture there. It says, and Lot went with him. God did not call Lot. God did not ask Lot to follow. The instruction, the promise, and the blessing was to Abraham and his seed. But Lord said, even though God did not speak to me, I will find one that I know God is speaking to and follow. Genesis 13, beginning from verse 1 to 5. So follow the story now. God calls Abraham, Lot went with him. Genesis 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went out, or Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. The Bible says, and Lot with him. You see there again, Lot continued to follow. He valued that relationship. Next verse. And Abraham, as a result of his obedience, was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Verse 3, and he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4, it says unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Next verse, please read verse 5 if you are a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. My goodness, stop there. God called Abraham and said, Abraham, obey me. I'm about to make you a blessing. And someone who was not part of the promise followed Abraham. By the time we get to chapter 13, the same thing the man of promise had. The one who understood relationship also had it. You would not even know the difference again. Who God called and who followed. Write this down please. Destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships, associations and connections. Please write this down. Destiny fulfillment is impossible 
impossible without relationships, without associations, and without connections. That means it is impossible to actualize destiny without relationships, without associations, and without connections. For instance, it is your relationship with Jesus today that has formed the basis of your being saved and has given you a guarantee towards an excelling life. You needed a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is the absence of relationship that takes men to hell. It is the presence of relationships that take men to heaven. Relationships are that powerful. It can determine your eternal destiny. What are relationships? Please write this down. Relationships are advantageous connections. In simple terms, relationships are advantageous connections. Underline the word advantageous. Relationships are advantageous connections. Relationships are connections that are mutually beneficial to the parties involved. Relationships are connections, are you writing, that are mutually beneficial to the parties involved. They are advantageous connections. They are connections that are mutually beneficial to the parties involved. This is very powerful. So when we talk about relationships, when we talk about associations, they are advantageous connections that are mutually or should be mutually beneficial to the parties that are involved. Please write this down. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections. An example is what we read in Genesis 12 and 13. That Lot went with Abraham and everything God gave Abraham, God also gave Lot. Relation, the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections please look up there is no great man on earth today whether in the secular or in the church whether a believer or unbeliever it is when you are dealing with the subject of religion or um, i mean relationships this is the subject where both science sociology psychology and religion unanimously agree that without relationships, there is no progress. In fact, the statement be fruitful means be relational. Because without relationships, there is no fruitfulness. It takes a union and a relationship between a husband and his wife for procreation to happen. That is true for plants. That is true for animals. That is true for all living things. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections. Remember what David said in the Bible when he became king. He said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they went down to a place called Laudeba. They called a man called Ziba and sent him to Laudeba to go and fetch a man who did not have the capacity he was completely crippled from birth and he did not even have the capacity to do anything for himself called Mephibosheth is it in your Bible and the Bible says that they brought Mephibosheth and the king said you will serve with me for the rest of your life and told the 15 sons of Ziba that they will go and plow the land for him 
Relationships are powerful. In one night, your destiny can change because of relationships. And in one night, your destiny can be destroyed because of relationships. Write this down, please. Very important thought. Relationships are also currencies. Relationships are also currencies. Just like you have Naira, you have your dollar, you have your pound. Relationships are also currencies. They can buy anything that money can buy. Relationships are also currencies. They can buy anything that money can buy. If money can buy you a house, relationships can buy you that house. If money can buy you a car, relationships can buy you that car. If money can pay your school fees, relationships can pay the school fees. Anything money can buy, relationships can also buy. Whenever I teach along these lines, I pray a prayer for my people that I want to pray for you now. That may you never be so poor that the only thing you have in your life is money. Did you hear what I said? Did you understand the prayer? That if the only thing you have in your life is money, you are very poor. Because there are many currencies in life that we use to purchase the things that pertain to destiny. There are realms you get to where your money becomes like ashes. It can't buy anything in that realm. You will need to use another kind of currency and relationships is one of the currencies are you learning unfortunately we live in a world where we think that money naira and cobo and dollars is everything the centurion was not a poor man he had money but money could not heal his child he needed a relationship another kind of currency for that child to be saved are we together now yes nicodemus was not a poor man but he needed a relationship to give him enlightenment about the things of the kingdom money is important but in addition to money make sure you get other superior currencies because you will get to realms in life and destiny where everybody has the money you have so you will need to use another kind of currency are you learning already the easiest way to succeed in life i said is through relationships and destiny connections that relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy i will tell you sincerely the reason why i'm here standing right now is because of relationships that is the reason why you are able to hear and receive what god has in store for you the reason why you will be great in life is because of relationships if you ignore relationships and ignore connections you have ignored success in its entirety Everyone knows that the best time to have strategic relationships is at the level that you, are at, that you are now in life. Because you have the liberty to see people in about the purest form they can ever be. I hope you know that. Most of the people you will meet now, they most likely don't have money yet. They most likely don't have influence yet. So the corruption of the day that can turn them into something evil is, is they've not been battered by the evil in life. So you can easily, chances are excellent that if you win at your relationships in this level, they will truly be destiny relationships. Please write this down, everyone. There are three levels of relationships or you may call them three kinds of relationships. That everyone on earth would require to succeed and to excel. There are 
three kinds and three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships please say after me general relationships one more time say general relationships so the first kind and the first level of relationships is called general relationships for as long as you are alive you will interact with people in your environment you go to the shop or a mall to buy something for the five minutes or ten minutes you are there you will interact with people you could find someone buying the same item you could laugh crack a joke or two and never see the person in your life again if you board an uber or a bolt or a bus within the time the distance of your journey you can have interactions with the person driving you or maybe the bus conductor or maybe a flight you are traveling somewhere within the 15 minutes 45 minutes even if it's 10 13 hours no matter how long within that time you can have a chance to talk with people generally there there is no definite commitment to those relationships it is the lowest level of relationships general relationships but can i tell you the truth every relationship no matter how great starts from there that means if you are ineffective in managing your general relationships it will not be able to graduate to the others that i'll be showing you the key to maintaining and managing general relationships is friendliness and honor write it down please the key to managing and maintaining general relationships is friendliness and honor in fact i may want to add discernment because there are times that the greatest gifts in your life will come in forms that you may not easily accept so in addition to friendliness in addition to a, the hearts that communicate honor to all men you will also add discernment is someone learning already general relationships now watch this come my friend let me use this man for an example let's assume this man maybe he doesn't know who i am doesn't know anything about me we can be passing somewhere and this this gentleman can see me and just say good afternoon sir not knowing that god has called me and mandated me to help him maybe not even knowing that i have a relationship with his parents but just that act of honor and courtesy i can look at him and say my friend where are you from and begin to find out about him you see that now imagine that this gentleman is looking for admission say for instance in the university and not knowing that i'm the jam registrar for instance or i am the closest friend to the jam registrar his dishonor to me and not being friendly and just looks at me and pushes me i can leave him in peace and then one day they drag him into a jam center and say we are looking for help and i remember people forget what you tell them but they will not forget how you made them feel they will remember that this gentleman treated me bad and you can recycle needless years of pain is someone learning thank you general relationships you must learn how to be friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown laughing up and down it means to have a warm personality a personality that is always receptive and then to be able to show people honor those who understand honor are never stranded in life and then to discern because most times answers to prayer comes when men come god answers prayer not only by sending power he answers prayer by sending men so while you are praying take note of the man who comes in answer to your prayer your prayer the answer to your prayer could be in a man in fact i teach it this way that all blessings come from god through men to men nothing comes directly from god to a man there must be a man midwife in what leaves heaven and arrives the earth 
general relationships number two the second level and the second kind of relationships are called seasonal relationships please write it down most believers are ignorant of this level and this kind of relationship seasonal relationships now please look up these are relationships from the name there are relationships in your life that are not meant to be destiny relationships they are there for a season a time and a purpose that means these relationships are time tagged you have to maximize the blessing and the benefit that comes from them within the time allotted because once the time elapses elapses whatever you did not get you may lose forever seasonal relationships i'll give you an example your classmate i'll give you an example your schoolmate there are relationships whose lifespan can be two years three years five years seven years and you may never see them again there are some of you for instance shortly after school or shortly after your time in nigeria you may relocate and go abroad and certain relationships that you now enjoy you may never have the opportunity to have and enjoy them again but the lessons the wisdom the benefits and the advantages from those relationships you can discern and receive them most people do not understand seasonal relationships now let me tell you something with seasonal relationships the advantage and the benefit from seasonal relationships only remain within the lifetime of that relationship you must have the courage to know when seasonal relationships have come to an end because if you do not understand when seasonal relationships come to an end what once bless you can also cost you listen carefully and learn many people do not know when seasonal relationships come to an end and they continue to force it to walk to their detriment you have to know when seasonal relationships in your life and destiny come to an end hallelujah this is very powerful i remember many years ago there was this gentleman for some reason i live quite a very busy life honestly but for some reason I saw the text of this gentleman and he showed to be a very sincere person and I reached out to him and when I reached out to him he cried that he this was his background and you know he wanted to learn to know the things of God he was simply looking for a chance to live a meaningful life and I said I can't commit to this gentleman I don't even have the time but I made up my mind I said even if it's two weeks let me give this gentleman dedicated attention and see what I can do to contribute to his destiny and i would give him assignments scriptures to read give him certain sometimes i would call him you know or when he calls me i'll cut when i'm back maybe from a meeting or sometime i'm even praying or studying and here is his call you know i just felt this was an honorable gentleman very respectful as he sounded and he was surprised because i would call him sometimes for over 30 minutes can you imagine and talk with him share, get tell him to get a pen and a paper make reference to materials to help him in fact i remember a few times when i even made transfers to him and i said gentlemen go and buy books with this make sure you and he was surprised sometimes he would send a text and say god what have i done and i taught him something i said my friend let me tell you something in as much as i love you don't you think it will continue this way maximize every day and every moment that you will have hallelujah yes and one time the gentleman started calling calling ringing i remember i returned from a meeting i told him to follow everywhere i am meeting and listen to the messages it's part of the mentorship system and one time i remember i was preaching somewhere 
I didn't save his number, but I could see the, the digits. And he kept calling while I was on stage. He clearly was not following the meeting. Calling, calling and disturbing and writing, have I offended you? What is this now? I thought you were going to help. I said, oh, the seasons. You have, let me tell you one of the ways you know seasons have come to an end. The blessing that maintained it lives. That blessing, the, listen, this is a powerful revelation. The blessing that is in it lifts. Not because you are bad, but it is a way of making you know. When a baby is in the womb of his mother, after nine months, the same pregnancy that the woman would dance and be happy about, she becomes dissatisfied. And even the baby lets her know, I'm tired of this place. Correct? The baby now begins to engineer all kinds of skills to force her, to tell her, Madam, you have to get me out of this place. And let me tell you, whether it is by normal delivery or CS, that baby will come out for sure. Now hear me. Never try to resurrect what God is the one killing. This is the mistake that many believers make. Can I tell you this? When a tree is dying, you can water it to come back to life. But when it is dead, there is nothing you can do for it to come back to life. Be careful. Lest the people who were in your seasonal relationships keep putting pressure on you. Remember, we're primary school classmates and they keep inconveniencing you crying for a space in your destiny and you keep feeling guilty no you don't have to be evil that relationship was for a season now that the season has ended you must know when to move forward can i tell you this the bible teaches us these seasonal relationships in the journey of abraham please listen carefully the bible says when abraham left he went to go and sacrifice Isaac when you read from Genesis 22. He went with his servants. They started the journey together. But when he got to the base of the mountain, he turned to them and said, Gentlemen, you have tried for me. From here, it is only me and my sacrifice that will go upwards. Did they do wrong? They don't have to do wrong. He's just saying your season, the validity of your contribution has come to an end. Can I tell you this? There are things God will not do with you till you allow relationships that have ended to end indeed. There are certain things God cannot do with you and in your life. Now let me tell you this. Because of the emotional nature of humans, it is usually very difficult. It's the reason why many young men cannot leave home when they are supposed to leave home. That doesn't mean you stop relating with your parents. But you have come of age. If you don't leave home, you can never be established. Even if it is one room, pack out and go to that one room and start. So that you can have a testimony that you will give your children. That like my father, I also know God is faithful. I started with a recharge card and a mattress. Look what God has done now. Many people cannot experience more of God. Because they hold on to seasons that have come to an end. Is someone learning? Seasonal relationships. In Nigeria, there are songs that came in certain seasons. And everybody sang those songs, including you. Remember how many times you listened to those songs? They look like you will never listen to any song again. But after a while, to your shock, you will even hear the song in your car and flip to the next song. Not because the song is wrong. The anointing that came with it with that season has served its purpose. Hmm. Every man of God and every champion on earth with respect to destiny our voyage on earth here is a seasonal relationship because one day whether you like it or not like i said yesterday prepared or not your season will come to an end 
How many of you remember any name called Reinhard Bonke? Wave your hands. How many of you remember any name called Billy Graham? Wave your hands. How many of you remember any name called T.L. Osborne? Wave your hands. How many of you remember any name called Sir Isaac Newton? Wave your hands. Question, where are they today? How many of you remember any name in the Bible called Peter, Paul, Silas? You would think that these people, their seasons would not end because of the high level impact. If Christ tarries after 100 years, say for instance, he will not wait that long, I assure you, he's coming soon. I can assure you this by the authority of scripture. We are not going to wait that long before he comes. But then, say for instance, the earth remains for the next 150 years. Do you know, if we don't give birth to anybody again, after 150 years, even the baby today may be gone. The whole earth will be empty because every one season would have come to end. Remember when you farmed last year, you were happy when you saw the maize growing. And the way you pampered the maize, the maize, um, you know, the, the, the stock, it was as if it would live forever. And all that pampering was just for four months. The day you were harvesting it, you did not even pity what you once pampered. You removed the corn and matched everything and that was it. Ready for another planting season. You must understand seasons. The key to maximizing seasons even seasonal relationships is to discern and to take advantage of the blessing and the benefit listen look up let me teach you something there are some of you who grew up with aunties and grew up with uncles some of you grew up in families that may not have treated you well some of you are even working jobs you don't like and you are wondering why God put you there. Realize that you are there for a season. Instead of complaining. The stopwatch is, is, is counting down. You may be there with your auntie and your uncle. Staying with them. They may not have treated you well. But God is using that season to build stamina in you. So that you can survive any other thing in the future. Instead of complaining and getting angry. Discern the season. Because one day, what you are running away from today, you will miss it when the season passes. I would always give this example. Have you seen little children who want to be adults by force? You come back and you find them trying to act like mommy. They will carry mommy's cloth and wear and it's flowing as if they are an angel and they are happy. Sometimes they try to do what daddy is doing. And may God not help you that your child finds a car key and goes to open the car and his leg is struggling to touch everything and he's just doing whatever he can do because he thinks the seasons are too slow. He will wake up and find out that he's 50 years old and miss those days and wish he could go back. An example of what I'm talking about is you. Who would believe that you have come this far? I had the privilege to see um, one of my dear people who trained me growing up and my goodness he was an old man I saw one of my pictures one time and I couldn't believe it I said this is a joke you mean I've grown like this where am I running to <laughs> but what you do with seasons is what determines whether you will go far or you will remain where you are is God teaching someone now so a quick recap that there are three levels and three kinds of relationships number one is what general relationships your interaction with your environment every day number two seasonal relationships number three the highest level of relationship and this is the one that lasts throughout the lifetime of your destiny they are called destiny 
or covenant relationships. Please write it down. Destiny or covenant relationships. Hmm. What are these relationships? They are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime. For as long as you are alive, those relationships should remain. And these are the relationships that you should pay any price under God to maintain. Because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships. Is God speaking to someone? An example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your parents. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your children, and then your relationship with strategic friends, connections, mentors that God brings to your life. Woe betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships. You may never be able to actualize destiny. I want to say something respectfully speaking. When you see people in old age, isolated, frustrated, with no help whatsoever, some of them will give excuses like, I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. I'm sorry, but I disagree. It does not take education to invest in relationships. It takes honor, discernment, and humility. How can God give you a gift of 40 years, 30 years, 50 years, and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny? You must be a dangerous person then. Someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say, I believe in you and I see you an advantage to my life. This place is quiet. I'm sure God is speaking to you now. Because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships. Some of you, that classmate you met is not just a classmate. There is something connected to destiny. For some of you, this ministry that God brought you is not just an option just because you are it is destiny connection. Now, let me show you what happens. When we do not discern destiny relationships. Are you ready? Genesis 13. Let's continue from where we left off. We'll start from verse 7. Remember the story. God called Abraham and Lot went with him. God prospered Abraham and God prospered Lot who went with him. But something started happening. Pay attention to my message now. The Spirit of God is speaking. There was a strife between the headmen of Abraham of Adam's cattle, of Abraham's cattle, and the headmen of Lord's cattle. Can you imagine? Both the one who carried the promise and the covenant, and the one who followed became so blessed. But with every blessing and with every lifting, there are always issues. The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, and Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, it's not the whole land before thee separate yourself ah now there is a problem you know what abraham was telling lot it seems like now you don't even know why god blessed you because you followed me you partook of the grace upon my life now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people to know why god blessed them that it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing let there be no strife go he said separate yourself you never allow this to happen 
over destiny relationships. This may happen for general relationships. This may happen for seasonal relationships. But when it has to do with destiny relationships, swallow your pride. Because we are about to learn a lesson from Lot now. Are you ready? Please give it to us. Separate yourself, Abraham told Lot. I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right, I will take the left. Abraham was telling him, it does not matter the location. What is on me will sort me out. But you choose any direction and go. Now watch the foolishness of Lot. Which is the foolishness of many people on earth today. God has brought you to this camp to give you wisdom for destiny. The Bible says, And Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered where before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Eden, as thou comest unto Zohar. Hey. Then, Lord shows him all the plain of Jordan and Lord journeyed east and they separated themselves one from the other. Now follow carefully. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Where did Lord go to help me? Lord dwelt in the city of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. This is what separation from destiny relationships can bring. The first decision that Lord will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in Sodom. Can I tell you this? There are relationships God brought you to because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships, what happened to your father will still happen to you. God brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men. This is true. Lot went unfortunately to Sodom. Question. By the time Abraham came to rescue Lot, where did he find Lot? He did not find him at the gate of Sodom. Lot had moved in, moved in, and he was at the center of Sodom. Even though he remained a righteous man. But there was still trouble. Because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted. You will still suffer it. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here. Kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.